Uh, okay, everyone, thank you very much. Um, we have our last little session now where I'm delighted to be joined by Andrew Coward, who is the general manager of software networking at IBM. Um, and it's our third insight of the day, but we're going to go off on a bit of a tangent, I think, Andrew, aren't we? And I think uh, we Yeah, I think we should, as, as because this is the last session. Um, so, first of all, let me just ask you, how are you, as IBM, how are you helping telcos with their AI requirements? Let's, let's just get this, this, this question first and establish this. What exactly are you doing that makes telcos AI strategies successful? Well, Guy, I'm, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> it just came to me, a flash of inspiration. Um, so, so I joined IBM four years ago with the intent of rebooting IBM's networking business. And um, since then, we have now acquired uh, five different companies. We have uh, seven products in market. Really um, going after, I'd see, the real key problems or challenges that we see, uh, not just in telco, but in networking more broadly. And the first problem of around data collection, which we've spent a lot of time talking about today, um, how do we get the right data in real time um, and focus on the right things, namely applications, the things that people use? We haven't spent that much time talking about customers today, but it turns out that they're the ones who complain about applications, not about networks. So can we tie those two things together? So that's been a lot of our focus. Secondary, the automation. You heard from Vess uh, a little bit earlier today um, from a company called Pliant we acquired back in March this year. How do we drive automation um, and make that low code, no code, easy, easy to consume, uh, and and just make it very fast as well. Like can you solve that problem, and then linking those three two things together. Of course, AI. So working with IBM Research, how do we take some of the new models that are being built? For example, I wonder how many people in the room actually know that LLMs are not good for time series data. That's a really interesting thing, right? So we're using LLMs for all this. We we haven't talked about the fact that most of the data that telcos have is actually time series. Um, so IBM Research came out with a, a, a small model based on a time series called a tiny time mixer back in March. We pushed that into open source. It's been downloaded 500,000 times. So not just a telco focus, but anything time series. It turns out a lot of things that are time series focus. Uh, and so what we're doing is taking that and a lot of other technologies around um, AI and using them together with the data we're collecting, together with the automation we're building to drive a complete kind of end-to-end -end capability um, to deliver, you know, the, the automation, the orchestration that's necessary. This is December. It is the season of Dickens. And yes. you and I spoke earlier in one of the coffee breaks uh, about how perhaps we are conjuring up the ghost of Christmas past here. I, I think we are. Yeah. Do, 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 do you really <laughs> think this is coming back to haunt us? Well, I mean, we talked about the ghost of Christmas future earlier just a little bit. Um, I mean, if you think about the past sessions that we've had in this very room... We have talked a lot about um, the inability to collect the right kinds of data, the inability to automate. And it's not as if AI is this magic wand that's going to solve all these things. And so I, I kind of feel like we're, well, I, I guess the ghosts of Christmas past materialize as technical debt when they show up on January 1st, right? Um, and that technical debt is that we still need to make sure that we have built the right collection mechanisms. And, and some telcos have done much better than others on this. I'd say where most telcos have done very poorly is automation. You know, we've had this really big push over the last decade on orchestration. I find I have very frustrating conversations with telcos, frankly, um, around redoing an RFP that they you know, may have issued four or five years ago because they never made a decision and they never moved it forward. Right? And yes, we've got some new technologies in place to, to go after those problems, but this is an unmet requirement. Right? You can't have AI orchestrate a network that can't be orchestrated, right? They're not magic, right? And so that push for APIs and API find, API find not just the outbound, the kind of public face, but the internals from the cell phone network, the, the, the sailor, the backhaul, et cetera, all has to get done. Now, there's another AI discussion going on. Unfortunately, it's not here, but there are scores and scores of young, enthusiastic developers and it's a massive community. If you, if, you, if you follow any of them, you go to the site, discussion sites, they, they are really doing a lot of innovation, real cutting edge. Um, 
We haven't really spoken about any of the innovation that, that we're seeing there today in, in, this, in this context. You know, we touched on voice this morning. I mentioned uh, real-time API. We could have talked about Bolt.new and um, you know, browser-based apps and well, yeah. browser-based software that's going to sort of kill off apps and, and you talk about no-code, low-code. There's, there's an awful lot going on. So you know, wh why, why aren't we talking about this? Why aren't we bringing these into telecoms? No, I, I think that's very interesting. We, we mentioned the word revolution a couple of times, and I remember that the Gil Scott Heron song, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. And I kind of feel like we're not um, seeing, because we're coming, coming from top down in telco, we're trying to figure out what the strategy is for AI and pushing that down. We're not understanding what's actually happening um, at the coal face or the code face, if you like. And so much revolution is taking place with how developers within our organizations are actually wanting to code, what tools they're finding, what things they're doing. Um, famously, you know, we're, how many organizations in this room have shut down the use of open AI um, until you could get your hands on what was going on, right? Like, I promise you that they're all off, your developers are all off finding their own tool sets and code and, and methods because they're out there. I mean, Guy, you, you plan to rewrite Spotify this weekend. Is, yeah. is it <laughs> no, I'm just going to rewrite the Telecom TV website because apparently it's very easy. Uh, it'll, it'll take me about two minutes and I'll have a fully functioning uh, website. The, all the stack's out there. It's easily accessible on the browser on, you know, using Chromium. Um, it, it's, it's incredible what can be achieved. And a lot of this is, yeah, it's all right. It's, it's just show and tell some, some demo stage, early demo stage. But th this is going to work its way into commercial products and production. It, it is, and it's interesting. If you think about IBM's history, we, we have, I don't know how many billions of lines of COBOL that's still out there and maybe Fortran out there and everything else. You know, so we're being asked by our customers, interestingly, don't convert that to Java or some other language, but can you just document it for us? And so there's this kind of huge process of like, I, I have no idea what this code does. It was written in 1968. <laughs> now, how do we make it? Um, understandable so we can decide what to do with it. So there's some actual baby steps that our customers are taking to use AI in code. And then you've got the kind of full, how do I just rewrite something completely or just give it a few prompts and do that. One of the interesting things we've been doing um, with the plant technology we acquired is, is actually with low code, no code, kind of very quickly cycling through um, how do you write, how do you tell it to just write something for you? Like write me an API that takes a firewall rule and publishes it to five different types of firewalls I have in my network. And for it to take not much longer than I just spoke at to actually go deliver that. So that it's kind of we're going from one extreme to the other, if you like. And I think different organizations are going to be in different places around how quickly they adopt this. It goes back to what you just said about uh, Spotify, because if you, you Google it, it's on YouTube. There's, 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 there's demos, walkthroughs on, on, on YouTube. Um, and, and the prompt is, it's a language prompt. It's, yeah. it's make me a Spotify clone. Yeah. Enter. And there it is. Right. It's, it's quite incredible. Exactly. So it's like, well, how and how much? So the, the worry is, of course, when you've done that, if you have to go edit it or make changes and you're not a coder, I, you know, that's, you know, so are we generating, are we going to create a new set of technical debt around the inability to go um, essentially maintain these products because the code is non-intelligible. Right. So, so, Andrew, what should we, as an industry, be focusing on? What should we be covering? What should we be going into more detail on um, within AI in the, the, the coming year? And when we get back together, and we will meet again in a year's time for another Tokos and AI, what is it we should be talking about? Where, where should we be, ideally? Because we don't want to repeat ourselves. We haven't got time to repeat ourselves. Right. Well, let's talk about the AI models. I think we've, we've kind of been a, a little um, what's the word, bipolar on what AI models. Do we have one big one for everything? Do we have lots of little ones from different vendors? I think that will shake out somewhat through the next year. Um, we shouldn't discount startups from coming along with, with models. We haven't talked about startups much today. Um, and if all the innovation is, is happening in that space, um, if I think about the growth of my own business, it's because we, I've been acquiring startups into IBM because they've got the, the juice, if you like, they've got the magic that, that we need, right? Um, and so I, I think that's the kind of which models play out. Um, my personal view is that uh, we will need different models for different things. Um, and you know, just the idea of saying, I need something, it, it may not be a different model, but it'll certainly be tuned that's different radio versus backhaul versus core versus IP. I think we'll need all of those. And so the agents, as we've been talking about, will materialize 
um, into how do they resolve for the different elements of the network and then how do they feed up. So again, we haven't talked about it, hierarchy of, of agents and hierarchy of, of LLMs will, will absolutely play out. And I think that's going to be interesting. Well, obviously, we will have an entire day of agentic AI next year. So you guarantee that. That's, that, 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 that's a given. But anyone got any other ideas, just get in touch with us, please, because Ray and I are always eager to, to talk to you and listen to um, what you have to say. Um, for now, I've got a bit of housekeeping. Um, but for now, Andrew, stay with us. But thank you very much indeed. Andrew thank Cole. you. Okay, so that's all the time we have this year. Um, thank you all so very much for being with us today and contributing. It's been very lively. We do appreciate contributions. As Ray said, um, we, we didn't do any of our pre, pre-arranged questions. They, they all came from the audience and from the discussions we had during the breaks. Uh, we must do it again. Let's move it to the big room next time, should we? Uh, talking of which, tomorrow we are moving to the big room. So if any of you are with us tomorrow, it's the great telco debate. Uh, back for its 11th edition. It's, uh, I believe, 11th edition. So we enter our 10th year of the great telco debate. Uh, same building, just a different room, the big room. Um, so please join us for that if you can. If you can't, we are live streaming tomorrow's festivities. So you can catch us online or watch it on demand in a few days' time. Now... Those of you who are coming with us on the big red bus, I have been informed the big red bus is stuck in traffic, which, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I'm talking very slowly. <laughs> tell, us a, tell us about what you're doing at, at IBM, Andrew. Uh, it's on its way, and it's going to be arriving in approximately five or ten minutes' time outside. But it will take you five or ten minutes to pack your bags and go downstairs and make your way out. So it should be there at about quarter past five. If not, just um, just hang around in the freezing cold. Hopefully it's not raining. Um, don't miss the bus, as it says here on my little list. Alternatively, we have cordoned off an area of our local pub, which is just a few minutes away in, a, in I think, that direction, uh, which is called the... Telegram. Telegram. There you go. Um, if you're coming with us on the bus, the bus will drop off its passengers there at approximately 6.30. So if you go there now, you'll miss the rush. So they'll have, uh, have lots of space. Um, that's it from us. I can't drag this out any longer. So thank you to all of our sponsors, because you really make this possible. Um, to all our delegates, to our speakers, to all of you, uh, thank you so much indeed. Thank you. <laughs>